Welcome to the first video of chapter three. Chapter three is all about lines. So we're going to talk, be talking about parallel and perpendicular lines. We're going to be talking about the angles that are formed when we have parallel lines. We're going to be writing the equations of lines. So we're going to start today with section one, which is identify pairs of lines and angles. So this is going to be the background for the whole chapter. Like normal when we start out a chapter, we're going to start out today with a lot of definitions. We have one objective. We are going, going to identify angle pairs formed by three intersecting lines. You're not going to need a calculator. There's not going to be too many numbers today. But we're going to identify angle pairs. We're going to start out with four definitions. The first definition is parallel lines. Now, this you've probably learned before. But par so parallel lines are lines in the same plane. that do not intersect. So they're located in the same plane, but they don't intersect. They never cross. Now, skew lines are lines in different planes that do not intersect. So in a minute, I'm going to show you an example of parallel lines and skew lines so that you can see the difference. Parallel planes are just planes that do not intersect. And then perpendicular lines, we have already talked about, but these are lines that intersect to form a right angle, a right or 90 degree angle. In this case, perpendicular lines are going to be in the same plane. Okay, so now in order to synthesize all these definitions, I want to show some examples. So move down and look at example one. It says name a pair of all of those definitions. So let's start with parallel lines. Parallel lines are always lines that intersect, that do not intersect in the same plane. So let's look at this top plane. There are two pairs of lines that do not intersect. The first one would be AB. That's going to be parallel to CD. So AB, CD, if I were to continue those, they are not going to intersect. So those are parallel lines. The other example would be BC and AD. So, okay, so notice what we're looking at before we go on. We're looking at a prism, or it's like a shoebox. We have six planes, the top, the bottom, the left, the right, the front, the back. So you should have seen that before. So that was parallel lines. Skew lines, this is the one that's different. So skew lines, I said we have to look at different planes. So we're still going to look at that red plane at the top, and now we're going to look at this bottom plane. So if we stick with line AB, I need to pick a line that is skewed to AB. Now, if I look at EF, that's actually going to be parallel. Both of those lines are on the, the left plane. If I look at EH, though, EH and AB are on different planes, and they do not intersect. So AB and EH are skew. There's no symbol for skew. Please remember to write a line appropriately, so pick two points on the line and then put a line over the top. Now another example of skew lines. A lot of students say that AB is skew to GH. That is not true. So looking at the figure, you need to think, could I draw some plane between those two lines? Yes, you could. You could put a plane on a slant that would go through both lines. So those lines are actually in the same plane. They're coplanar. So those lines, AB and GH would be parallel. They're not skew. So if you're looking at AB, I'm just going to erase this so we can look again. So if we're looking at AB, another line skew to AB would be FG. Those are going to be skew. There's no way to draw a plane between the two, and they don't intersect. Moving on to parallel planes. The top plane and the bottom plane would be parallel to each other. So remember that you always name a plane by three points. So the top of the box I'm going to call plane ABC. 
That's going to be parallel to the bottom of the box, so I'm going to call that EFH. So ABC is parallel to plane EFH. And then lastly, a pair of perpendicular lines. So these are lines in the same plane, and they form a right angle. So AB is going to be perpendicular to BC. So AB is perpendicular to BC. AB is also perpendicular on this side plane to AE. It's also perpendicular to BF. It's perpendicular to AD. There's a whole bunch of examples. But those are the first few definitions. These definitions we're going to use throughout the entire chapter. So it's important that you remember these. Now we have a few postulates that we're going to learn. So a postulate, just for your information, this is something that is just assumed to be true. So it's not proven, it's just accepted to be true. So the first postulate is the parallel postulate. So the parallel postulate says, given a line and a point not on that line, there exists exactly one line parallel to the given line. and through the given point. Okay, so what this is saying, let's draw a picture. Given a line and a point not on the line. So given a line and a point not on that line. There exists one line parallel to the given line and through the given point. So it's saying there is only one line that will go through that point that is parallel to our given line. So that should be kind of intuitive. There is one other thing about parallel lines that I did not tell you, but the way to mark that lines are parallel on the lines are with little arrows. So those blue arrows tell us that the red line and the black line are parallel. Now the perpendicular postulate is exactly the same, except instead of the word parallel, we're going to write the word perpendicular. So recopy that postulate, but change parallel to perpendicular. So now let's draw ourselves an example again. Given a line and a point not on that line. So given a line and a point not on it. There exists exactly one line perpendicular to the given line. So that's saying if I go through that point and I make a right angle, there's only one line that does that. So there's only one possibility if I want that red line to be perpendicular to the black line, to my original line. Now remember perpendicular just means that we form a right angle. So the way we show that is with a box. Okay, so those are the first few definitions. Let's flip to the next page, please. Okay, so now we're going to get into really what is the most important part of this section. So this section is all about identifying different angle types. So the first page was all the background for this second page now. So we're going to learn a few more definitions. Starting with transversal. A transversal is a line that intersects two or more lines. So in this case, this right here is a transversal. It intersects two lines. Transversals form four different types of angles. The first one is called corresponding angles. 
second one is called alternate interior. Next one is called alternate exterior. And then consecutive interior. Okay. So corresponding angles are in the same spot. So looking at my two lines, I have one transversal and then I have these lines A and B. If I look at line A and I look at angle B, B is above line A to the right of the transversal. Now I have to look at line B. Above, the, above line B and to the right of the transversal would be F. So corresponding angles would be B and F. For another example, if I look at C, C is below line A to the left of the transversal. So going to B, line B that is, go below line B and to the left of the transversal, and that's going to be G. The other two would be angles A and E, and then angles D and H. So those would all be corresponding angles. Alternate interior angles are inside of the two lines, and they're on the same side of the transversal. So looking at our two lines, inside are going to be the, these four angles. So these four are interior angles. They're in between the two lines. Alternate interior means they're on different sides of the transversal. So C and F would be alternate interior. They touch my two lines, A and B, but they're on different sides of the transversal. The other pair then, as you can probably guess, would be D and E. They're on different sides, one touches each line. Okay, alternate exterior are the angles that are outside of the two lines on different sides of the transversal. Okay, so erasing what we have before. A, B, and G, H are going to be exterior angles. They're outside of my two lines. Alternate means they have to be on different sides of the transversal. So that would be A and H and B and G. Now A and B are not alternate exterior. Yes, they are on different sides of the transversal, but they don't touch my two different lines. I need to pick one angle on line A, one angle on line B. So if I were looking at these two angles, that would actually be a linear pair. Okay, and then consecutive interior. These are the same side of the transversal. That's what the consecutive means. And then they are both interior. So again, going back, looking at the angles that we have, these four are interior. Same side of the transversal would be like D and F. And then C and E would also be consecutive interior. They're inside of my two lines A and B, and they're on the same side of the transversal. Okay, example number two. Identify all pairs of the given type. So right now I would like you to pause the video. Try this one on your own, please. Take a minute, see if you can write down all the angle pairs. There's going to be four corresponding and then two of each of the other types. Pause, come back when you're ready to go over it. Okay, let's see how we did. First thing is to notice that this line is our transversal. So for every pair, you should have picked one angle on line A, one angle on line B. So corresponding are always in the same spot. If I look at one, one is above my transversal to the left of my line. So looking at B, go above the transversal and to the left of the line, so that would be angle five. If I'm looking at two, two is above the transversal and to the right. Above and to the right would be six. 
So then 3 would go with 7. They're both below the transversal and to the left of the lines. And then 4 will go with 8. Okay, now looking at alternate interior. I have four different interior angles. There's two pairs. I need to pick one angle on each of the sides of the transversal. So 2 is above the transversal. That's going to go with 7, which is below the transversal. Again, 2 touches line A, 7 touches line B. So then 4 will go with 5. 4 is on line A, 5 is on line B, 4 is below the transversal, 5 is above. Alternate exterior angles. I have 4 exterior. 1 will go with 8, and 3 will go with 6. Alternate means they have to be on different sides of the transversal. And then consecutive interior, looking at my interior angles again. This time I choose the ones that are on the same side of the transversal. So 2 and 5 are both above the transversal, 4 and 7 are both below. So hopefully if you got, you got those right, if not, that's okay. I kind of threw you guys out there to try it. So we're going to do a few more examples. Okay, now I want you to classify the angles. So again, you're using those four terms that we learned above. I'm going to do the first example with you. You will notice 1 is an exterior angle because it's outside, and 5 is an interior angle. Okay, looking at our options right above. So we have corresponding, alternate interior, alternate exterior, and consecutive interior. It can't be B, C, or D, these angles. They're not both interior, they're both not exterior, and they're both not interior again. So these angles are corresponding. So they're in the same spot. They're both above the transversal and to the left of their respective lines. Right now, pause the video and you try the next two, please. Okay, let's see how we did. For the next one, we notice that 2 is exterior and 7 is exterior. These would be my interior angles, the stuff on the inside. So I have two exterior angles. They're on opposite sides of the transversal. So these are going to be alternate exterior angles. And then for the last one, 4 and 5 are both interior. They're in between the two lines. They're on different sides of the transversal. So these are alternate interior angles. Hopefully you got that, those right. If not, that's okay. You're going to have a chance to practice some more tomorrow in class. Flip to the last page now. Okay, we're almost done. So our objective for this video was to identify angle pairs formed by three intersecting lines. We have two lines and then the transversal. So we learned about corresponding angles, uh, alternate interior, alternate exterior, and then consecutive interior. We also, in the beginning of the video, did parallel skew, perpendicular, and parallel planes. So, for your last problem, you need to give me an example of each of those four uh, terms listed using this box. Please make sure that you use proper notation. When you come to class tomorrow, I'm going to be making sure that you have this problem completed. Good luck!